Good afternoon. It is the OG. Uh, today is Monday, and we uh, got a special guest here. We got a special program. So we thought that it would behoove us to get this knowledge and to uh, talk to a fantastic, great, and an amazing couple that have gone through and they're going to tell us a little about how to go through now. Sometimes you can tell a little bit more when you're going through. My name is Lewis Jackson. I'm your host. We're located at 3105 Washington Road in the city of East Point. Phone number is 444-770-300. And we are going to and uh, we got a delighted program today. It was so amazing that we couldn't wait to Thursday to do it. So we kind of jumped the gun. <laughs> and as of the day, uh, I have a couple with me. And as we talk, you're going to see why I think that they're one of the amazing couple there is because uh, you know, I can tell from, I read the book, and just from reading the book, I can tell that they even interchange each other's thought. They know each other so well to when one ain't the other one know it. <laughs> As I said, my name is Louis Jackson. You, we are brought to you by the Russian Fund. Red, uh, Fred Russian is the lead attorney. You need an attorney? Give us a call here at 444-770-300. Air aggressive is a word that my best friend created. And of course, it says it's a positive attitude approach to all challenges and certain self confidence with the mission of achieving successful results. So, all you air aggressive folks out there, you're not arrogant. You just know what you want and how to do it. That's what we got on this stage today. Two air aggressive people, a couple with an air aggressive man. Uh, we also are brought to you by A to Z Imprint. A to Z Imprint will imprint any of your dreams as long as it's moral and legal. If it's moral and legal, they'll do it. If you got if your flow is not clean we got the best cleaning products there is. It's second to none. Your clothes smell so fresh that you won't want to change it. The kids be able to eat off the floor once you do it without cleaning. Your carpet would, would be so soft that you wouldn't want to get off of it. You you might even want to sleep on it. It's so good. And I wash my house. If you leave your house, you need to make sure that it's taken care of. We got, we got a, a camera that will follow you, your house, wherever you go. You can know what's going in and what comes out. If the wrong person is in, you can invite them out. If the right person is in, you can invite them to stay. If the kids get home that late, you know it. You don't have to be that. You just be on your phone. Uh, your iPod or whatever you got and you know what's going on. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we, As we said, we got a great guest and uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves since they uh, looking so good and I am so pleased to be here next to the uh, good looking Miss Linda. Miss Linda. And we're going to let you start out, and then we're going to let Mr. Antonio. Good afternoon. Good. Hello. 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 I'm Linda Lee. Hello. I'm, I'm Antonio Lee. And we're the Lees. <laughs> we're so used to saying that. <laughs> well, now that we know y'all, you're the Lees, and uh, we are here because you wrote a exciting book. And you, you know, as a, I, I guess you probably know statistic more than myself, is that marriages are falling apart. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, three of them 
get married and two of them leave. Absolutely. And you, you, you well, I don't know, but from reading, I understand that you guys have gone through your trials and tribulation, and with that, you learn how to walk the right line. You know how to uh, respect each other. And, and, I, and I saw where you see it in there. Aretha Franklin wrote the respect, but the respect that you got is not the same <laughs> one. It is. It shows how you got to respect each other and be in, in, in the proper places. So I'm going to let you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let y'all uh, <laughs> tell us a little about it. And I understand that you've got a play yes, sir. that's going on. Yes, sir. So uh, let's get with it. Okay. Well, in regards to that good place to start, um, the R-E-S-P-E-C-T is so easy to say, so easy to spell, so easy to sing. And I thought I, I thought I was doing it until I really found out that I had no clue and I did anything but respect my husband. And without that respect towards him, I couldn't get the love that I so needed and wanted and, and longed for. And without him getting that respect, he didn't get the respect. I wasn't getting the love. I wasn't getting the love. He didn't get the respect. And we both ended up empty. If we were bank accounts, for lack of better terms, our love banks were empty. Um, and yes, we do. We have a play um, that's actually going to be this Saturday. The 22nd at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Salvation Army Croc Center. Where is that at? Now, that's right off of Metropolitan, the old Stewart Avenue. It's big Salvation Army campus. If you're coming oh, off okay. of... Okay, yeah, the campus. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 There's a theater. There's that's a campus. theater. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's a theater on the inside. And the production is at 5 o'clock. And we're going to celebrate the cast right after it. So your ticket includes the play and the after party. Um, the book was hard to write. The play is even harder to do, so we need your prayers. But God told us that somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needed to read this, but someone needs to see it. And we're doing as we were told to do. I, I just want to say what I've been saying all along. If God commissioned us to tell our story... Uh, the way that we told it, you know, we couldn't put everything in the book, but God said, just do what I asked you to do to get it out there. And uh, and to now to do this production, uh, it's, we got to continue to dig deep within ourselves to even bring back up those memories that we ran away from because I, we was running, you know, we was running away from what God had commissioned us to do. And right now, I just want to say one couple, you know, to dig a little deeper into saving a marriage or that couple that thinking about marriage to think twice before they jump the broom and get godly counsel, you know, because sometimes you can be excited about, you know, the, the looks and the physical and all of that, you know, that that's good. That's good to have and you so bubbly in love, but then once you go from the honeymoon, you come back. Like my wife said, we've said in the book, when you come back and what's waiting on the porch is marriage. <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand there's a difference between the wedding and marriage because it is two totally different worlds. Marriage, you never graduate from. That's a degree that you will never get, but you just got to keep on pressing and keep on pushing. Each classroom is different. <laughs> But it's all according to you, how you would handle that. Because that when we was in this thing, when we first got married, we were just too busy falling in love. Now we have coined the phrase, we stand in love. Because when we stand in love, we stand in love, we can see things now. When you're falling, you're down. You're down and out. But when you stand, and you stand on the promise of God, now we can see when the enemy try to come in, I can guard her back, she can guard my back, and we can guard each other. And we have a circle of, of surrounding people that will uh, keep us accountable on what we say and what we do. Now, we, we, we can't do nothing but go right because God is watching, first of all. Now we up on the microscope because we put our business out here <laughs> in this book. And people are like, okay, 
I see that. <laughs> but we got to live that. Amen. And, but God is, is an awesome God, so he would definitely have us doing what he would call us to do, and, and that is to get our story out so we can ha save someone else, because my story is not for me. It's for someone else that look like me. So, uh, in putting the book together, uh, I see where, uh, in the beginning, you, you you were a family man. You went out and you, you worked hard and you brought, uh, I mean, you, you know, you fed your family. And that wasn't the problem that you say you had. The problem was that the thing that's after then that you didn't know. And so it took you 25 years to learn some of the things that, is it once you reflected back, was it that you saw in the earlier days something that you would you would do? Uh, let, me, let me put it like this. Mm -hmm. When did you find out that God had a hedge around the two of you that when somebody come in that they had to knock to get in? Well... I, I, I found out, really, like I said, a long time ago. Sometimes you can see things, and in hindsight, it's 2020. You can see things, but I kind of downplayed it. I kind of denied it, denied what I seen, and I denied the truth. I ran, ran away from the truth, calling to what God was really had me to do. I did everything that I thought was politically correct. I went to work, brought home the money, then stay out late, and, and took care of the kids. But I didn't do the other thing, and that was to engage. Once we got married, I didn't pay her any more attention. Cause I said, okay, I got it. You know, you like you know, you have your trophy piece on the on the shelf. So I had my trophy piece on the shelf, and I didn't do the extra work. I'm like, hey, I ain't gonna do that. I'm going to work. But I didn't do that extra work as far as building the relationship that God said, okay, I gave you your help me. And, you know, and she would tell me right. But yet still, I didn't want to hear that because it wasn't right for me. But if I didn't, if I didn't think about it, it wasn't a good idea. But if she brought me something, I, I didn't listen to the godly wisdom that was coming through her for me at that particular time. And sometimes it was, it came like she was, she was nagging. I tell her that she was nagging, but she, when I think back, look at it now, she wasn't really nagging. She was really just telling me right. But I wasn't mature enough to handle the right that she was telling me until I like I had to sit back and, and I had to go to people that had to counsel me or that I had to just sit back and like, okay, I see someone else like that was going down the same road that made me think about me. I'm like, wow. That is you know, sometimes when you're in, in a in a situation you think you're in a in a in a boat by yourself, but you're really not. So I had to think back and say, Wow. If I would have just did this a long time ago, then we would have been further up the road. But God said, at my time, you know, at his timing. And when God's timing is right for us to, for me to get right, for me to pay her more attention, for me to love my kids, you know, which I did that. But I had to love her unconditionally, even when she was telling me right, when it, even when it hurt. Because I was like, I was trying to protect my feelings. Well, now, now, is it that you were protecting your feeling is it, is it the way that you were brought up in a family where you couldn't reach out and you had to learn that after uh, after uh, cutting the biblical cord from your parents so is it that's I mean what kind of you know did you have any brother was any sibling well it's like this <laughs> I mean, we, 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 we talk about this um, in the book because I am the oldest boy in my family. I had three sisters, um, so I grew up with a house full of women. I was the man of the house, uh, but I also was mama's boy. Yeah, I, I, was, I was a mama's boy, so we had a relationship, but then I also was my grandmother's boy as well, so I couldn't do no wrong in her eye. Whatever I did... Even if I I can hit somebody and she know I hit them, I didn't do it wrong. They had to start it with me, but I was covered in that way, and I came into the marriage into into our relationship that way, cause everything went my way. So whatever it was, it just went my way, and and Linda was the same way. She was the baby, you know, our, our replacement. She was the baby, I was the oldest. So we kind of I was spoiled in one sense. 
she was spoiling one set. So we had two people that were spoiled that was bumping head, but I didn't realize that that I was being pampered all alone. So I was pampered as 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 a, a child coming up. So I didn't um, turn that off when we got married. Okay, now that you you had to change, and um, I'm sure that Linda changed a little bit because she said that she thought she was respecting you until she looked at some things and she saw what the real respect respect was is that it. <clears throat> It, it it wasn't that she was uh, overshadowed. It's, it's, it was that she she had learned her place, and it wasn't that. Uh, uh, in, in other words, she was saying is that she just learned how to be the helpmate without, and it wasn't disrespect. It was a respect, and that this is something that most, I guess, couples don't know. Is because that that's why I asked you, which how you fall in the family, because that sort of tells how hard it is to get rid of some of the thing that's in your mind. And she being a baby, I'm sure that she <laughs> really had some problems, and she knew that she had to change. I mean, not only I'm sorry, not interrupt you. Not only am I the baby, you have to understand, I'm the baby, baby. Um, I've been losing siblings back to back, but if we all were here today, um, I'm 49. The next closest to me would have been 59. I lost her in 2010. Yeah, that's baby, baby. Yeah, then the next would have been 62, which is my brother that I just lost. And the next would have been 63. And then the only one left with me is my mother's firstborn, which is 65. So by the time I was five, going to kindergarten, all of my siblings were married and out. So I was not only my mom's baby, or and I was definitely my daddy's everything, but my sisters and brothers, I went from house to house to house to house, four different homes, five different houses, and got spoiled. So you couldn't tell me anything. <laughs> well, that, that, that. Now how did you meet? Well, we basically, we, we, we was in this, uh, <laughs> same neighborhood. We, we, we see if this story is going to be the same. You know, so we... So uh, that's that sweet, that's that high school... Well, we really wasn't high school sweethearts. No. You know, because... Uh, we look, went in the neighborhood. Right, we was in the same neighborhood. We went to the same house. Carver Homes. You ever heard yeah, of Carver Homes? Yeah, yeah. No, I saw you hitting it. That it was Carver Homes. Absolutely. We Troop started, Street. We saw the, the real Carver Homes. I, I, I saw thing. something about the Trump. Troop. Troop Street, T-R-O-U-P, and for anybody out there that know Carver Homes, they know Troop Street. Well, I know I, I know Carver Homes used to be the old Carver Homes. Now it's not Carver Homes. No, it ain't the Carver Homes no more, but the one we went to with the red, the red bricks, the red bricks. Okay, so you were up there, so you went to Price High. Went to Price, but when I went to Price, he wasn't at Price yet, quite. He was, we're, we have a four-year difference in age. And even though now it doesn't matter, you can, you know, it ended up coming together. But at that time, he had his crush. And he had a crush, right? <laughs> <laughs> crush, that, crush that work. Crush that work. <laughs> it has its purpose. <laughs> so there's a method to the madness. Yes. He had a crush on me for years. And I thought he was the cutest little thing. But I just was, you know. Smelling myself, as the old folks say. And one night I saw him. We were out. My friends and I we were out clubbing. And I was. I saw him, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, who was that?" And my friend was like, "That's the the little guy who's always had a crush on you." I was like, "Oh my God, he's grown up." <laughs> he had. That was January 1986. And you remember the date? January. That's that's one. That's a good quality that my wife do have. If you. Ever tell us something? I um, never forget she it. She would never forget it. January 1986. She was, she was, you know, and uh, we, we kind of balance each other out. I, I remember names and faces. She right. Remember dates. I remember dates and years and music. And we were married that May. See, I can tell that you, you, you know, uh, in the beginning, I said y'all had lack, lack thoughts and, and what you didn't have, she had. <laughs> what she had, you could back it up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken uh did y'all adopt the kids yes somewhat what happened was in 1992 mm -hmm. um our daughter 
would follow our sons home every day from school like it didn't it didn't dawn on us because we had that house where everybody hung anyway all our children's kids we had at least well, how many kids did y'all have two by two okay, and so she would follow him home and ended up we just got her she just ended up ours she was nine years old and she became ours and we asked could we have her and we were told yes and and we've had her ever since and then and she has a beautiful relationship with her biological family but we took her and she's been ours and now she's 30 years old married children but she's our baby and and it's so beautiful because I'm, I'm sure you read the book that our children actually put inserts in the book right. we love the way they did it they asked could they and we were like well the book's already gone to the printer and they were like who's the printer and before we knew it they went over there and put their stuff in it and we didn't read it until everybody else read it but it 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 ripped something out of us to read what they wrote. Yeah, I, I saw that, and, and I saw that. I said, "That's real unique." Yeah. It didn't put it in the middle that, or it, you know, to put it where their statement would be outstanding, and it would set itself apart. Yeah, it almost. Yeah. yeah. It so, sealed it. Yeah, kind uh -huh. of sealed. Uh -huh. Now, uh, in school. Well, Carver Home one time <laughs> was, uh, you know, it was a good area. Mm -hmm. Then it got to be hard area. Yes. But by the time it got around where it got to be rough, you guys were already gone. We were easing on out of there then. Yeah, we were bringing the ki taking the kids and we were easing out of there. We, we never lived there when we were married. Well, our, our parents still stayed in, in, in the area. So mm -hmm. we wanted our kids to have you know the same upbringing or background that we had because we didn't want to shelter them right because we we did move out of Carver home mm -hmm. and still let them go to school in the Carver home area because that's what my wife and I had in common that we was in the Carver home but our mindset was elsewhere right we and wanted, I knew we wanted, we wanted better for our kids you know not knocking on what we were we would just wanted our kids to be exposed to a lot better but we uh, brought them back to the neighborhood to mm -hmm. visit my mother, her mother, so they can still feel that, 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 that what we came up in. Right. My parents actually raised them with us. Um, we, I had the type of parents that when we would bring them over on the weekend, we would have to fight on Sunday to get our kids back. They were just like that. I um, was, I, I was determined. And with the agreement of my husband that they could go to the same, if nothing else, the elementary school I went to. I found out that a lot of the same teachers were there. And I was like, oh, they got to get that. They have to get that substance. That's one. And two, we had boys. And we were not going to shelter them where they were afraid when somebody said boo. And I needed them to know, okay, we're over here a sort of suburban. Now I need you to go back over there so you'll know both sides. And you know how to deal, and you know how to be humble, and you understand your people. So it's very important for us to know. And now, they don't recognize not anything else but Zone Three. They don't, they don't recognize any no, nowhere else we've lived but there. And like our youngest son, he's an educator now, and he he teaches school. But no matter where they may put him, he always tries to get a school over in in the APS. Or he tutors children in that area. He believes in giving back because of what they got. Well, that's that that is amazing when you got when because most young folks are not willing to give back, especially when it's at their time and expense. Because mm -hmm. most times they say, "Well, you know, uh, uh, I don't have time to do that." But when you see a young person takes time out. To educate, to uh, m you know, to uh, mold life in a better way. Mm -hmm. It is it, it is a, it, it it's just amazing. So it tells me that you guys was amazing parents. Amen. What we what what we did and we what we trying to do. We trying to instill in them value, the value of people. And oh, okay, when you said value of people, what is the value of people? That you can't judge a book by its cover bef before you can get in there and, and get down in the dirt with them. Get, get, get in there with them to see their life and then to try to help bring them 
out of the life that they're in if it's, they're going down the wrong track. So, so we, we, we try to expose them to better, but then we also try to let them know, okay, you're not better than them because you are and 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 have the mindset, but don't look down on other people. Okay, I, I was about to disagree with that when you say you're not better, but I agree with you shouldn't look down on nobody. Right. Because if you don't step up and make yourself a little better, then you'll always be there. Right. So you gotta make yourself a little better. Right. And and but you shouldn't, as she said, disrespect one because you have moved on up a little bit. Right. Like for instance, I was one of the things. Another thing we had in common in the area, I know for a fact, especially I did, even amongst my family members, I was always told, "You think you're better than I am." You and I was, and I told them, <laughs> I said, "You know what?" I said, I love you and I want you to think like me and want like me. But if you don't think like me and you don't want the things I want, then, you know, if you just deduct, then you kind of look at that. And if I do some deduction, yeah, I guess I am. And I wasn't saying that to, to put them down. I actually thought it was a motivator at the time that they, if nothing else, I could make them mad enough to want to strive for something. Yeah, that, now, now, that's, that, I mean, that's the type of, uh, uh, of life that kids should look at each other, be, but as opposed to some of the things that they do now, try to, uh, you know, crush one. And what you did was you're trying to make them want to be like you. Uh-huh. Pull them up. That's all. You, you need to pull yourself up by your bootstrap. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as when you mentioned that, my, my son, my old, youngest son wrote an essay about liberation. And he talked about the crab mentality that we do have, uh, people of color, we have the crab mentality of once one come up, we, 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 we try to pull each other back down. But it said reach one, teach one. So we have that mentality that reach one, teach one. If we, can, if we up, we're going to try to bring my brother and my sister up as well. But we don't want to be um, do it in, in a way where we are so arrogant that we are you ain't trying to scar nobody right exactly but we want to use your, your phrase i like what you got the arrogant aggressive yeah. the arrogant aggressive the you know what was good in that not to interrupt you when you said reach one teach one yeah. it segues right into what we're doing as well yeah. because we don't want to walk around oh we were married 26 years yay for the lease no we want to pass that forward we want to know if it, we want to make sure that somebody else can see that it's not it wasn't no thing over our head, and we just got it. And as a matter of fact, not only do we want the people to be able to, to make it to 26, 36 years, we don't even want them to go the route we went. Right. That's one of the things we say. You know, We went all the way around 675, we down go straight up 85. Down. We just want them to go straight up 20, read the book, learn. What, what, what do we say? Get blessed from our what? Get blessed from our mess. From our mess. Because we had some mess that we, you know, I know I was, I was spoiled and I was tore up and I was one of my way. My wife wanted her way, but we had to really move out of God's way okay. so he can have his way in our life. So that's what we came to this term that we had to really um, be able to tell our story so we can, you know, we ain't all peachy, you know, it, it wasn't easy. And it's still not easy. It's a hard uh, pill to swallow. Sometimes you have to swallow your pride. Uh, I had to let go of my ego because we can have an ego that get in the way. And uh, she divorce, she divorce her opinion. If I don't agree with it, we just mad. But then go in our designated corner. But then we had to realize, okay, what did, did she say was true? Or was it, uh, was it me? So I had to really analyze what the situation was so I can grow to the fact that okay we got to come together but other but before that we had to really come together for our kids we didn't know how it was a detriment to them that we get it right because we have taught them to do everything according to uh, emulate us but we would do stuff that we wasn't seeing eye to eye but we would tell them to do the right thing but we had to get right. But then they had to come to us. They they, they was bold enough and open enough to, to, to confront us on issues that we wasn't doing to live up to our own expectation. So we definitely had to get it right. Like my older son said, we was on a microscope. But now we know that we are on a microscope even before God. So, But now before people. 
So they had we had to get it right so we can tell them, okay, when you get married, this is what you look for or what you can do. Yeah, I, I did see where where one of them said that. Look here, darling. <laughs> let's straight. Let's get straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now you gotta you, let's do it. That was that 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 was a good part. That 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 was real. You know that means that you respect them and you took time out to listen and all in the past mm -hmm. probably had. Now who touched the two of you to make you change? See, because what you're saying is you're touching somebody else. Right. Who touched you? Said, look, when you when 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 y'all was having your problem, and it wasn't as smooth as it, as, as glass, <laughs> and you were wondering, you know, uh, it's slipping away. Let's stop. Who was it that 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 you emulated? You said that let's look at it. Let's take it. We we have read the book, and we try to do what the. I mean, you know, we 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 want to do what God like. And uh, so, uh, who, who made who who did you follow? Can I start that one? Go ahead. A lot of people we had um, we've always had some type of counsel from the time we got saved. However, oh, we talking about before you got saved. Uh, before we got saved. It wasn't no touching. It wasn't nobody telling us anything. Because you have to understand, we didn't have a point of reference to a marriage. So we were the top. We were we were the top shelf of the top shelf. We were we were the cream dollar uh, dollar cream. Because so nobody was trying to tell us right. Because in their eyes, we were it. So because okay. we were it, we thought we were it. Okay. So we didn't even know we were wrong. Okay. You know we we. Wrong. So when, when did you get y'all got saved together? Yes, Tuesday, August thirteenth, nineteen ninety one. Seven o'clock at Gospel Tabernacle. Yeah. Gospel Tabernacle. Pastor Wiley. He was Pastor Wiley Jackson then. Then he became Bishop Wiley Jackson. Mm -hmm. We were there fifteen years, and we didn't know. What, we didn't understand. We we thank God for salvation. We thank God. Uh, for uh, a, 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 a well, we church a, family, uh, basically, uh, we got our biblical foundation there. But and the, and they were trying, but we were like babes out of. We didn't know. Okay, so we were there 15 years. It took about another five years for us to really start walking right in God. So, so y'all kind of grew along with him then. With with. With, with Bishop. Oh yeah, when we got there in '91, they had only been in that new building about three years. No, they only been. In they got in there in '87, '88, yeah. '89, about four, four years. Four years. And mm -hmm. he been, as this is before then, he started his in the storefront. '82. Uh, yep. So you. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, so so that was a good walk. Oh, the really good walk. We look back now, and now we know how good of a walk it really was. Um, okay, that that was my next question. Uh, did you outgrow? I mean, did you outgrow his teaching when you moved to your next church? What? No. Oh. What happened? We thought we didn't even call it outgrowing. I just know it was about three or four years. <laughs> Let me just say this: We went to a play. Someone, someone um, gave us some tickets to a play. We went to a play, and when we went to the play. The things that they were talking about in the play, I was like, oh, my God, were they peeking in our window? Who are these people? I had never heard of the people. They came down from Maryland, from the D.C. area, and then they kept saying, we have a church. We have a church. And I was like, well, where is the church? But they would never say. And we went back that Sunday, and the church was the theater. The church was the theater. And I kept going, I kept going, and what happened was he was still at GT. And I was going for about a month, and I joined before he even came he liked them but it was like I just can't leave GT and I was like I need to go where I'm all this is what I knew this is what people would say what's the difference I said this is the let's difference let's face you I grew it now <laughs> this, this was the difference this was the difference I could walk out of GT and still be just this mean and snap dragon mouth and whatever I would walk out of there after those messages and I really understood 
I'm not just hurting. I'm, 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 I walked out of there wanting to do it right. So I don't know if that's outgrowing or the fact that I actually started to grow and I needed a harder message for me. Not Pete. Not, I didn't say everybody. Me. It's like you may have one child who you don't even have to spank. You can just tell them they're going to go wash the dishes. Then you got that other one that you're going to have to spank him, get a rod. I was that one. And when it came to spiritual things, I needed to get it raw. And that's what we got. And, and that's what I got. But as far as who touched us, we had a lot of people that loved us. We have a lot of uh, a lot of ministerial people that truly cared about us that we had um, counseled with before. And when we got to a very tumultuous time in the marriage, we could always call them back. They wasn't even at GT. They weren't at Gospel Tabernacle no more. They wasn't even at our church. Really? Mm -mm, they were just fathers in the spirit. And we could dial them up. Antonio and I going through, meet me at da 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 da, -da church or meet me, we're going to counsel. Meet me at your house. Because even though our new church was given a strong message, they didn't have a ministerial staff. It was a satellite church. It was a young, right. young people. It just wasn't. We needed that structure too. He would take us, Elder Parish, Elder Oren Parish, and he broke us down. He broke us down. And he was the one that I can honestly say that really broke my husband. He really he really said something when they were in counseling. He looked at my husband. He looked at me. He looked at my husband. And what did he say? He said, uh, I see that you're not broken because what, what happened, we, my wife and I had a, a disagreement and we split. So I separated. We like we never divorced, but we separated. But I, I I hurt them, but I didn't realize I hurt them because I was just so into myself. But he he seen that he peeped that and he said, I, I, I see something. I, I, she's hurting, but you 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 just you 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 coming along like okay everything is all hunky dory, but no, that's not the case. So he made me look inside myself and say, okay, all right, I did have a part in this. So I got to get this right. So I had to realize that, okay, it, I'm not going to say it's all my fault, but it is my fault because I am the husband and I am the head of the house. So whatever goes down, it's still going to, God going to say, all right, what did you do? I am the Adam of the house, but I wasn't acting like that. What I was running and I was blaming, so I was acting like the Adam that was blaming instead of, being the husband to make sure everything was right. So I ran away from situations that came up that was a challenge to me. But then he made me realize, okay, then you got to get this right. So I had to get my relationship right with God so I can see her. And I wasn't worshiping enough. I wasn't on my knees travailing out and calling on him. Instead of, you may have done your wrong, but I should have been praying for you, covering you. And when you were mean, I should have been nicer. And I didn't know how to do that because that baby in me said, just baby me, just love me. Okay, that's good. But right now he doesn't know how to do that. And I wasn't strong enough, mature enough, or big enough woman to just love you and be kind to you and respect you and worship and just just um have an air of worship there. Well, well, now that we, we have gotten, I mean, we are mature. And... and, and and most folks don't, and I like what you said. It doesn't matter whether you've been married 20 years, 40 years, or 50 years. There's something that you can learn. And, and, and you two are mentoring other couples. Now, how do you decide? Do people come to you when they want to be mentored? Or, or you say, or you can just let... The, uh, the, the, the guy that saw him and said, "This ain't right. Let's let's us let me pull you to the side. We need to talk." Uh, you just wait till you, if you see something falling. Do you try? Do y'all walk up and say, "Do you want to? Uh, can we talk?" Well, it, it's like this. It's a lot of people come up to us and ask us the question of how you guys are doing it, and then it's a back door of, of them saying. Well, I want what y'all got. How how do we get there? So it ain't like we going to no one. Or we seeing something. We may see something, but we not going to force our will onto no one. And, and God don't force his will on us. So we, a lot of people come to my wife. And I told her this all the time. They'll come to her. Their wife will come to her. And they're like, well, can your husband 
talk to my husband or can you talk to me? And so she she been ministering with walking with women for I don't know how long. God been had this calling on her life to 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 mentor women, but like I said, we was running. And, and, I, and I tell all the time that you got to do it. They they go they keep calling you. They keep calling you. You're giving that advice, so just just do it. We just, I didn't want to do, do it. it. And I would tell him, I said, I don't even like women. I don't like them. They messy. He said, but baby, that's your call. I said, it's not my call. I said, listen to you. I'm going to tell you and God what my call I is. I they are not my call. <laughs> Then I succumbed, put my white flag up. Okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But you know, what, what I like about it is that uh, as I read it, you saw when, I mean, I think it felt like when I was reading it that you could feel when you needed to really change. Oh, absolutely. When you needed to reach out to somebody, when you needed to ask for uh, help, and when you need, when you, when you, even though that, Everybody thought that you were doing good, and you thought that you were doing good. Sometime uh, when you talk to somebody that counseling you, and I said that is most folks don't see it because especially when they think that they're doing okay. When uh, when most of us men are taking good care of our families, we are not in the streets; we are home. But you know we. I think you said it too. We are watching television. <laughs> I mean, the, the ball game is more important than to listen that to what you what you got to say. And it was sort of amazing that y'all saw what each other needed. And sometimes he didn't want to leave the ball game, but he <laughs> did because you asked him something. He know he knew at this time that you needed his attention. And when you try to learn about the games, just to be around you. <laughs> so women need to know that if you're together, doing things together, and you said watch it, uh, washing your cars together, <laughs> uh, whatever it is, it's a... Uh, we play a lot. We, we, we play a lot. Yes, and that's yes, the one so. thing sometimes I tell them, I said, I'm so glad you're my buddy and you know stuff. And we're so old school. Sometimes we laugh because we're not that old. But we love old stuff. And our children, we sit around and have Andy Griffith Day. All my children love Andy Griffith. My children love, I, I have one son, my oldest son. He can pull up some Cab Calloway and some, oh, I'm talking about some 1950s. Oh, and we sit around and we rock and we, um, 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 what do they call it, scat. And we have a scat contest, and we have a good time. We, we have fun. And this is the one thing um, people will tell me. We want to be like you guys because you're like best friends. I said, okay, hold up now. You come into the movie when the credit's going up. It wasn't always cute. Now, so get the real story. It's work in this. That's number one. And number two, you want to grow to be each other's friend. You don't want to be each other's friend during every aspect of the marriage. You don't. We were so much buddies that when it came to other things like love, love, that love that we do because we married, that wasn't good because we were buddies. That we could be doing that and saying, wonder what the Falcon score is. That's not good. Mm -hmm. That's not it. I'm the, you know, we real now. I'm just like, well, hold up, wait a minute. Something missing here. You, I was so much his boy. I, was, I mean, truly. He, because he didn't hang out. So me and the boys were his buddies and I was just as much as a homeboy. I was like, whoa, whoa, I'm still a girl. I'm still a girl. And he has to remember that sometimes. Even now because we have so much fun that he has to remember she's still a lady. And one of the things I tell ladies out there, if you're strong and you're, you, you think you're so independent and you got your own money, and that's fine because we all need a man. We may not need them for the money, and you may have your education, but you, God, designed it for us to be with someone. But think, do this too. Be a lady. Don't be so hard and like you don't need them. I don't pump gas when he's around. I don't open doors. I don't. I stand there until that chair gets pulled out because what will happen, they'll feel like they're not needed. They need to know they're needed. What, what I had to do, and, uh, and, 
as you mentioned about uh, the, the football game and, and, and attention, I had to learn how to give that up because I, I seen that she needed my attention. So I had to say, okay, I got to give up something to get something. Yeah, I saw that. That's what I'm saying. It, it's amazing when you, you, could, you could recognize that. Mm -hmm. That's something that most men would not recognize because if a touchdown is being, they don't want nobody getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So, and, and and it was amazing that as as I read it, that you, I mean, the two of you got to the point where she knew when when to watch the game with you, mm -hmm. and you knew when to leave the game for her. Right, because what 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 happened when she started getting uh, showing interest in the game, it kind of intrigued me. You know, but then I was like, okay, she's just doing this for me. So what can I do for her, mm. you know, to, to help offset this? Because I don't want her, I don't want to be one-sided. I don't want us to have a one-sided relationship. So I say, okay, we can do something else. We can just go have a picnic, something that don't cost money. Keep it simple. Hey, let's go to the park. Let's pull out some sandwiches, even if it be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, mm -hmm. and, and some Kool-Aid, and, and call it a day. So, so uh, do when you counsel, do you tell your 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 your, your mentees that? Absolutely, yeah. because a lot of times, and, and we want to, you know, we want to get to the play because they don't want to, you know, thinking they got to have all this type of money. Right. And all, no, just keep it. And a lot of times they come in, they having problems because of finances, and we have to tell them the most romantic and the most sometimes. Most nine percent of the time, that's what they. Right, nine percent for the men, nine percent for the women that want attention. But you know, I don't care what you say. It's money. Don't get me wrong, but what we tell them in reference to what you asked is that when you were dating him, it wasn't about his money. Especially if you've been together quite a while, you didn't have any money. We right. met on the bus, and so now our sweetest time. Y'all didn't meet on the bus. Y'all met in the neighborhood. Y'all met in Carpenter We met in Carpenter Hall. When you saw he was a little <laughs> bit of boy, but you know, I said that he was a little cute. But you know, the sweetest <laughs> thing he ever did. Let me tell you the sweetest thing, and then we got to get to the play. The sweetest thing he ever did, I was at the bus stop with one of my friends, and I didn't have any change to get on the bus. He said, he, he used to always call me Lady T. And he said, Lady T, you can use my motor card. I was like, oh, wait. See, somebody else in the ring. So that was a seat. Or a car. Was. You sure did. And, it, oh, and look what it blossomed 26 years later. But anyway, we got to talk about the play. We got to talk about the play. Yeah, yeah, because you got four minutes. We got four minutes. The play. Flatlined Love the Play. Based on our book. is this Saturday, September 22nd. At 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. 967 Dewey Drive. Yeah, Dewey Street. Dewey Street. Right is off of Metropolitan, which is the old Stewart Avenue. And it's the Salvation Army a croc center it's the salvation army campus and the play the ticket is twenty dollars but it includes the after party so you get to break bread with us eat a little bit take pictures with us and the play is going to be heart throbbing it is definitely not it just come ready if the book make you stop and sit back and say whoa the play is going to make you say whoa three times but we just want to save a marriage we want to save somebody out there that says i'm out and we want to save somebody who's jumping in it just because it feel good so uh, uh the 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 people in the play uh yeah. Are they professionals or you got them out of your church? There are some, no, there are some people that are professionals that's been acting a while. And then we got people who have never acted before. We love those. We love those people because at one, there was a time we never acted. And there was a time we never did. So we love helping people to get a chance to do some things. We have this one guy in the play and uh, he plays grandpa. Never acted. But he is a Adorable. He's 65, 64, but you think he's about 27. He got more energy. Wear me out during rehearsal. Love him to death. You're gonna love him. He, they, they all help us bring the story, um, to bring the story out. And what, what it, it, it touched during rehearsal, we found out that every single person in the production had experienced divorce, one way or the other. And we have people in the play from the ages of. From eight, eight to uh, sixty-five, five. even the eight-year-olds. So, the, so, so the eight-year-old uh, witnesses his dad walking away and leaving his mama there to feed him. 
Now, it may not be just that dress. Right, but you understand. But I understand. Right. Now, now that you have done this, what's the, as they call it, the end cool? What's coming next? We want to do some seminars. We want to do some marriage retreats. We definitely want to do that. We want to get them away so that they can get in a conducive type manner where they can talk. Okay, well, the music saying it's time for us to go. We understand that. We, 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 well, uh, just just tell, tell folks how they can reach you. Please reach us at leeandlee.co, not .com, L-E-E-A-N-D-L-E-E.co. Or you can call us at 404-914-1392. Lee and Lee Productions. We're on Facebook at Lee and Lee Productions. We're on Twitter at what? At, at Solid Solid is one. one. And can we and can we between our radio? Yeah. We're on the radio every Monday night at seven o'clock on W Y Z E and our radio show is called Let's Talk Love and Relationship with the Lees. That's Antonio and Linda Lee. Well, we we really appreciate it. It was a it, I told you in the beginning that it was something special and it was just as special as I said. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I got a feel for these things also. And so when I just, when I read the book, I said, this is the one that I need to be part of at the interview. Thank you for uh, coming and we are going to have to do something around here. I'm going to have to you know, y'all need y'all own place around here. Thank so you. So you need to talk to me later. Yes, we do. Thank you. Uh, Thank we'll you for having you us. Next week. Yes. All right. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Week. All right. Thanks, and we out.